the snack that smiles back. Goldfish, and uh, it's a trap. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Admiral Akbar and First Order Officer. Now, this is a Toys R Us exclusive. It didn't come out on Force Friday, so I was kind of worried because I really wanted an Akbar. But it popped up on the Toys R Us website last week. I was out of town. I ordered it, came home, waited. It showed up on my doorstep. It doesn't get any easier than that, so I'm cool with that. Now, it's not my perfect Akbar, but... It's a damn good start, so let's see how this works out. Looking at the package, it's the Star Wars Black Series box, just bigger for two figures, you know? Got the nice artwork down here cutting into the corner. I, And this is going to sound weird because it doesn't really matter. The toys are in the package. Who cares? But these being shifted over to here to kind of miss this, this open space right here bugs me. I know, in the grand scheme of things, who gives a shit, but... Yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. They should be centered. Ugh, I don't know why that bugs me. On the side, Admiral Akbar, First Order Officer. I guess there's not a translation for Admiral Akbar. He's Admiral Akbar everywhere. On the back, we get the bigger picture for the nice artwork. We get the bios for Admiral Akbar, or Grand Admiral Akbar, I guess he became at this point. Was that a slip-up? I don't know. Does Grand Admiral and Admiral mean the same thing? I... Psh. And then the First Order Officer. Didn't even give him a name. It's just, hey, that guy. How's it going? Down here's the warnings. The unreadables probably says something like, don't leave in your bathtub for extended periods of time. Especially the one that can't breathe underwater. Top, nothing but a hang hook. The bottom, bunch of legalese. Barcode. So I'm going to get this open. And I kind of know what to expect here, but it's still cool. Getting, well, the wrong Akbar, but... Will he be good enough? And there we go, all out of the package. And uh, not the most exciting set, but I do appreciate the work put in here. Looking at the First Order Officer first, uh, you would think there would be reuse here, but if there's anything the Black Series has taught us, it's that reuse is very few and far between. Completely new sculpt. Again, it's kind of surprising, and there's actually another surprise coming up here in a minute. The sculpt here, detailed all over. Again, what we're used to with the Black Series. There's a texture to the uniform. The boots are a nice, glossy, smooth black. It seems that they went a little bit more gray here. And yeah, it's The Last Jedi, so maybe they changed uniform color at some point, but if you go back to General Hux, he's more of a black color. This is not quite black. On the chest, there's what I'm calling code cylinders. So that's what they were called back then. Uh, that's what I'm calling them now. But the paint there is a little bit sloppy. It's not completely silver or whatever color they were going for there. And then get up to the head. I, it's kind of odd. It's a nice sculpt, but it's very nondescript. We don't have any frame of reference here. It's just first order officer. It does kind of look like Mark Strong or Jackie Earl Haley, a younger Jackie Earl Haley, but there is a surprise here and that's the hat comes off. I kind of figured it'd be like General Hux where it was just sculpted to the head, but nope. I, I didn't even realize it. I pushed up and it popped off and there is a head underneath. Now I don't know if it's because this reminds me of the Hasbro Marvel Legends Juggernaut sculpt from the movie. But this has a very Vinnie Jones feel to it. Maybe it's the hair. Either way, you don't like the head. And it's not not liking the sculpt. It's just the look of it. It's looking at you funny. It's got some sinister stuff going on in its head. And yeah, while it's not the photo reel, it's got the G.I. Joe eyes, the kind of wonky eyebrows. I do like the fade of the hair. Even though there's no sculpted detail up there, it's just painted and it fades down. And yeah, I've been waiting for Admiral Akbar for a long time, because this is where Black Series shines, is the alien characters. Yes, there's a likeness, but it's an alien likeness. We can't pick out, you know, the nose is a little bit wrong, the eyes are the wrong color. It looks like Admiral Akbar in the new movie. Yeah, wrong version, but still, good start. There's a texture to the uniform all over. There's a nice fade to the red on the arms. It's uh, You have the fingernails, or whatever they are, at the end of the uh, phalanges. But the red is a nice alien color. And then you get up to the head. This is where this figure knocks it out of the park. It, it, it really, Admiral Akbar, finally in plastic form. Again, the fading red, the orange all over, the eyes being painted straight for what they are. I mean, they're big old goldfish eyes. 
That's what we expected. That's what we got. You can't get any better than this. Like I said with the First Order Officer, the hat pops off, and it looks good. In the package, I thought, that's just one piece, but comes off, have a whole head underneath. That's the reason for it being bald. Maybe that's the reason they went with just a generic officer. Or maybe they didn't know the name of this yet, but all the way around it works. Now the proportions are a little bit off because when we get to the comparison you'll see how short this figure actually is, but it looks like regular size arms on a shorter torso. So they kind of hang a little low compared to where they should be, but you put them in a slight pose, you get them all looking officery and all, and it doesn't matter. It, it works out in the long run. And then get over to Agbar. It's hard to gripe about a character I've wanted for so long, but there is one thing that I'm going to point out. It's not a deal breaker for the figure, but just something that I found odd, and that's there's no swivel in the neck. He can't look side to side. Given the character, and he doesn't do a lot of, you know, action-y things, I'm good with it. It's just odd that they would take out a point of articulation, and I think it is because they have a moving mouth here, or well, a, actually a completely separate piece for the lower jaw. And to keep that in line, they had to add a detent to the peg going down into the body. That's going to be a bear to see. But somewhere right there, you can see an offshoot from the peg coming forward. That keeps the swivel from turning at the neck. It works pretty good for the mouth opening. Technically, it's an action feature. If you pull the head back, his mouth opens. and looks like it's feeding time on Mon Cala. Going over articulation, it, it, both of them are, except for well the neck on Akbar, they're both standard Black Series articulation. It's a ball going up into the head with a hinge in the neck. He can look down, he can look up, not a lot of tilt, swivel side to side, hinge swivel in the shoulder, comes up 90, goes up and around, gets kicked out by the shoulder pad here, but it is kind of rubbery, almost like an over. It's not an overlay. Why is it hard here and soft up there? Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up past 90, and then it swivels. Hinge and swivel at the wrist, side to side, swivels. Ball joint in the torso goes forward, goes back. Actually, that's a lot of back. Side, side, all around, and then swivels. Ball joint coming out to the hip can go forward, and this lower tunic piece, pretty soft, goes back goes out, swivel at the thigh, double knee comes all the way up, but look how tiny the kneecap piece is. That's odd compared to a lot of the other Black Series figures. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, really nice range of movement there, forward, pretty good, and then forward facing pin for rocker. On Agbar, already talked about the neck, you can look up a little bit, but that's about it. It's all devoted to the mouth. Jump, 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 jump. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder, comes up past 90, really. Then swivels around, hinge and swivel at the elbow, you're only going to get 90 because of the sculpt of the forearm there. Then swivels, hinge and swivel at the wrist, hinges, swivels. Ball joint at the waist, but I don't know, that's a high belted belt, high belted belt. You get a little forward, you get a little back, not so much. Little side, little side, wait, it goes left more, what's going on there? Okay, you can force it a little bit more. Ball going out to the hip, goes up. To here, goes back, goes out, swivel at the thigh, double knee, not bad at all. Actually, if you try to go up any further than this, it looks like it starts tearing on the back of the thigh. I don't know if you can see right there, but it kind of pushes out, so I wouldn't go too far with it. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward, and then forward facing pin. For accessories, Officer Bullet Tooth comes with a pistol. I do believe we've seen this before. I think it came with the First Order Stormtrooper, one of those, or the Officer. I, I just know this seems like a standard pistol for the First Order. And you can either put that in his hand, or he has his holster right here, which looks odd if you leave it empty. So more than likely on display, he's going to have his pistol in there most of the time. It is a little tough to get down all the way. It seems to want to stick, but you can work it down all the way right there. And then for some odd reason, Akbar comes with a Rebel Blaster or a Resistance Blaster, whatever you want to call it. I can't remember if we've seen this, but it looks like your standard Rebel slash Resistance pistol, rifle, whatever. And they did sculpt his hand into a trigger finger, which is okay, but I don't think of Akbar as kind of a pick up a blaster, run into battle cop type of guy. He's just going to bark orders. So nothing wrong with that. That's just how I think of him. So I guess it's okay. He can point. 
Attack the forward shield. For comparison, here's First Order Officer Rorschach with the original General Hux. And I, now that I look at it, I don't think it's so much the First Order Officer being short as it is Hux being tall. If I remember right, Hux is just a little bit shorter than Kylo Ren. But you can see the color differences here, the gray compared to the black. And yeah, it may be Hux being tall because here he is with the Resistance Trooper. And keeping with the trooper, here he is with Admiral Akbar. Akbar is a great size here. I can't believe how much I like this figure. So at the end of the day, like I said before, not the most exciting set they could have put out. I mean, we essentially got action figures of dudes that bark orders. Nothing wrong with that. I don't mind having statues that have articulation. So having these two guys that can move around, if need be, is perfectly fine with me. But... <laughs> yeah, as you'll see here, there's not a lot of action shots you can put either of them in. Not the most action-oriented characters. But I do appreciate getting them. I'm okay with the First Order Officer. Yeah, it could have been a specific character, but I'm also good with background characters. Grunts. Well, Officer Grunts. And then for Akbar, we have the ingredients for a classic Akbar from Return of the Jedi. The head, the forearms. Some of the body could be reused, but... Just throw on the white and the more 80s feel to it, and we have it. And then we have his officers. I've already seen customs pop up on Facebook. All the pieces are there, and I appreciate Hasbro getting it out, and they nailed it. They did a great job with this figure. And if you wanted to, you could fodder the First Order officer, too. He's got parts that, you know, for other officers. I feel like the head kind of looks like Baron Fell. Whatever you want to do. They're action figures. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.